Hi, my name is Victor Vidalis, uh, born and raised here in Phoenix, South Phoenix. Um, my story, I believe, is, is one of adversity. Uh, you know, it's uh, one of resiliency. Uh, it's a story of, you know, how a kid can go through tragedy and, and, and really make something great of themselves. Um, I don't think that my story is any different than any other person uh, in South Phoenix. I know there's a lot of children like me that grew up in South Phoenix and were faced with the same challenges uh, or are still faced with the same challenges. Um, when I was a kid, uh, my mom was a single mom with eight children and uh, we grew up very uh, impoverished. Um, we relied a lot on food boxes and welfare uh, and gifts from the family to make sure we had our, our daily needs and uh, most times that wasn't enough. Um, so I started being very entrepreneurial early on in age, um, picking cans, selling them, uh, picking weeds, um, selling watermelon, oranges, you know, anything that I can do to try to make some money uh, to help my mom and, and my sisters. And I remember just getting, having this great joy in my life uh, by being able to provide something for my family. Uh, it was a really good feeling. Um, we were a very transient family. Uh, I went to 14 different schools before I graduated high school. Um, so that gave me an opportunity to meet a lot of children uh, from a lot of different uh, backgrounds. And uh, I always felt uncomfortable in every school that I went into. And it was always a challenge to try to find that comfort zone. And in some schools, I never found it. I, I ended up being uncomfortable the entire time because uh, before I knew it, we moved again. Um, um, because we were very uh, poor, uh, we didn't have a telephone, so my mom would cross the road at 35th Avenue in Lincoln every night to uh, go use the Lincoln Market's telephone. And one night, uh, my freshman year in high school, um, she was uh, ran over by a drunk driver, her and my sisters and my brother. Um, my mom and my sister died instantly. Um, my brother ran all the way back home with a broken arm and a broken leg um, and just scratches and, and woke me up. And I just remember running out to see my mom laying there on the road and my sisters all crying. And it was one of the most difficult things to really understand being so young um, but I felt like it provided me an opportunity to be strong for my brothers and my sisters uh, since my father wasn't around and so I think I failed uh, miserably the first couple of years um, because of my anger and me not getting the help that I probably needed um, to deal with that anger I turned to the gangs in our neighborhood and it really um, absorbed me. You know, the, became very violent, and uh, the kids in my neighborhood actually really tapped into that because they were. I was willing to do things that other kids just weren't willing to do. But uh, luckily, you know, it ended me up in juvenile. You know, I got caught in a grand theft auto, and um, my father had given up on me because he couldn't control me, and, and nor was he a, a true father figure the entire, my entire life, so it's really hard to have uh, you know, control of a relationship that we never really had. Um, I didn't respect him, and, and I don't think that he really cared for me like uh, I thought a father should. Um, so my aunt, um, his father, or his brother's uh, wife, knew my mom very well. And uh, she kind of tapped into me and, and challenged me to change my life and, and move to Morency with her. Uh, she knew some judges that were willing to drop all charges, uh, just give me restitution and, and probation for substance abuse and, and anger management. And it was the best choice I ever made. You know, that helped change my life. I got to be a kid again. Um, I left with two credits going into my junior year, thinking I could never graduate on time. And, I didn't technically graduate on time because I didn't get to walk with my classmates, but uh, I took zero through eighth hour. I took summer classes, Christmas classes, summer, you know, whatever 
courses were offered at Eastern Arizona College uh, to try to get the credits necessary to graduate, uh, graduate and I did. And uh, it was one of the best feelings, being able to take that workload and still play baseball and played football. I started varsity football. I started varsity wrestling and doing things that I would have never able, been able to do here in, in the situation I was in. When I came back to South Phoenix, I was really shocked just that, you know, not a lot had changed from the two years that I was gone in high school and the three years in the Army. Uh, and I just out to make a difference, you know. And back then, I didn't have a lot of resources, but I had my story. And I felt like I could communicate with kids that were dealing with similar issues to show them that, you know, life is tough right now and maybe you don't have much hope, but, uh, you know, your teachers, you know, your rec center, your coach, you know, anybody that's in your community, um, there's somebody out there that cares for you, you know, even if you don't have that at home. Um, you know, and to try to reach out to somebody and, and just share with them what it is that you need and just to start listening. And uh, when I started sharing that, I, I've helped thousands of kids. You know, I have kids graduating college and, you know, coming to me and telling me thanks for sharing my story and helping them to stop making excuses for their lives. And,